Hi, my name is Dr. Ronald C. Williams. I am Associate Professor of Management at Coppin State University and Founding Director of the Center for Strategic Entrepreneurship. And we are uh, grateful that you could join us for a very, very, very uh, important conversation. I have been looking forward to this. It's, I, I'm sure it's going to be engaging and very insightful in terms of uh, HBCUs and the space we occupy in the state of Maryland and how we work to uh, empower the community. So in this segment, hopefully you have enjoyed um, all of the segments of the conference. And in this segment, we are happy to introduce to you uh, Dr. Pamela Allison, who is the Endowed Chair of Entrepreneurship and Innovation at University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, Ms. Janetta Hardy, Executive Director of Entrepreneurship Academy at Bowie State University. Mr. Omar Mohammed, Director of Entrepreneurship Development and Assistance Center at Morgan State University. And myself, the moderator. And again, this is a very power, power packed uh, segment with a very powerful group. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Hey, great day. Yes. Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Everybody. Well, this will this will be uh, very conversational and uh, sort of a kitchen table conversation. Uh, but I am I'm really excited because uh, in my 25 year career uh, with a state institution, uh, this is the first time in my recollection that I can remember something like this happening. N uh, certainly not. Uh, HBCUs coming together, but in this moment, we have the directors and the leadership of the entrepreneurship efforts on each of the campuses coming together. And I don't know if this has ever happened, so this is a significant moment in history and one that I hope that uh, those who are participating will benefit from and also uh, get a real sense of just how uh, focused and how much um, is happening in uh, the HBCU space around entrepreneurship. So again, we're, we're going to just have a conversation. There's so much uh, that is going on now and I shared uh, some background material with you ahead of times, but I, I was just really blown away uh, by some of the statistics that we were able to uncover. Of course, we, we know the, the tremendous need uh, that exists in the community uh, in terms of the entrepreneurial or socioeconomic trajectory of the community. Um, I know that nationally, in terms of the average net worth of, of, of Black families, that on our current trajectory, we are will hit zero by the year 2053. Um, I also am fully aware of uh, the shrinkage that has happened in terms of what people classify uh, as the black middle class. A lot of statistics that we are all aware of, but uh, today I want to highlight some of the positive uh, information as well. And um, one in particular to sort of single Morgan out, uh, your most recent uh, economic impact study was absolutely phenomenal, uh, done by the eConsult uh, organization out of Philadelphia that, that uh, made note of the fact that you are contributing $1 billion, just under a billion dollars to the economy of the state of Maryland every year and just north of a half a billion to the city every year. I don't think that um, many people are aware uh, in the general population of those kinds of statistics and that kind of impact, but that's that's one institution. So you can think about the power that we have collectively. So let me give you an opportunity, first of all, um, each of you to introduce yourselves and to also say something about what's happening on your campuses. And perhaps we can start with Bowie. Well, hello everybody. And thank you for inviting us to participate. And yes, Ron, this is historical. This is a first to have all four of us here in this space. I'm excited. And Omar and I have been talking about doing something like this for years. And I'm just happy that we are finally doing it. And we've got some other things that we're gonna be working on as well. Uh, but Bowie State University, 
Uh, it's a campus-wide um, entrepreneurship at Bowie State University is campus-wide. Every student, every, every faculty person is being exposed to entrepreneurship. Uh, our president has three pillars, uh, and that is entrepreneurship, uh, civil engagement, and social justice. And this building behind me, let's see if I, go, if I go this way, this building behind me, which is the new entrepreneurship living and learning community, is a testament to her commitment to ensure that every student that matriculates through entrepreneurship, and I say her, and that is Aminta H. Bro, Dr. Aminta, Aminta H. Bro, who's the first female president at Bowie State University. Uh, <laughs> and this building is a commitment that every student that matriculates through Bowie State University will be exposed to the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And this building is 170,000 square feet. It does three things. It's, 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 a, um, it's a residential building where a, a community where like-minded students will be able to come. And it's got all kinds of wonderful uh, um, cohorts that are going on in there. Uh, it's also retail space. So the students will be able to eat from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And our, our president eventually wants it to be open for 24 hours. And then it's our new home, the Entrepreneurship Innovation uh, Entrepreneurship Academy. And we're really excited about this space because in this space is where the matriculation happens, is where ideation happens, the entrepreneurial mindset happens. In this space, we have a maker space. We have an, um, a hatchery where ideation really happens. And then we take them to our maker space. And then we have a venture lab, which is where the real work starts for those people or students uh, and faculty who have more than just an idea and alum can also uh, work on their ideas through with our entrepreneur in residence and our mentors and coaches. In addition to that, we are the first HBCU to have, uh, and the only HBCU to have an accelerator program. We have the Bowie Business Information Center in our space. They are an award-winning uh, accelerator program, and it's a great pipeline for our students. They're our industry partner. They're the, the face of our business uh, development, engagement, uh, we also have the Women's Business Center and the Maryland Women's, the Maryland Small Business Development Center. So we are the hub for entrepreneurship activity um, here at Bowie State University. We are co-curricular, which means we don't have an academic comp component, but we do support the faculty in helping provide the entrepreneurial mindset uh, and any resources they need to continue to enhance their research, uh, their entrepreneurial mindset, um, and their connection with the students. Um, and we also engage, we meet with beans monthly, we meet with chairs, but anyway, I'm going to stop because we've got, you know, we've got our, you know, you pitch competition going on. We've got this summer, our summer launch program, which is a nine week incubator program. Where we take students ideas to another level. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's a great opportunity for students to continue to enhance their learning and their idea. Oh, and by the way, we're in freshman seminar. I'm sorry, I get so excited as you can see. We're in freshman seminar. So now every student, every freshman that comes to Bowie will be exposed to entrepreneurship. We actually have an entrepreneurial mindset, which my team goes in and we actually talk about the entrepreneurial mindset as well as the, uh, uh, excuse me, what entrepreneurship, uh, that entrepreneurship is a pathway and how they can continue to grow that. So I'm gonna stop and let my colleagues talk about, because <laughs> you can see I'm just a little excited. <laughs> just That's a little okay. excited you know, my, about my, only question, my only question is when do you sleep? <laughs> oh, you don't, that's okay. <laughs> no, so sleep we, is underrated. It's underrated. <laughs> uh, Omar, let's see what's happening at Morgan. We'll stay in alphabetical order. Uh, all right, good deal. So again, great greetings, everybody. And yeah, this is historic. Uh, it, it's been lonely, you know, lonely out here. <laughs> and now we got three, uh, uh, four, I should say, four uh, entrepreneurship centers and all of the HBCU. So uh, I'm looking forward to doing some, some great work with each and every one of you. Uh, so you can just go to my website. I'm not going to say a lot. Uh, it's at EDAC, they made me put this on up, EDAC Morgan, that's E-D-A-C Morgan.com. Uh, so we've been around since I was a student here on campus of Morgan State University. Uh, I'm the third director, uh, been, been here now going on 19 years, December the 3rd. Um, so, you know, our focus is really on demographic entrepreneurship. Uh, so, of course, we work with the faculty, the students, uh, and staff here, uh, and we go across campus. Uh, so, we definitely work with those individuals. Uh, most of our work is, is external. So, we work with the community. Uh, we work with women entrepreneurs. Uh, we have a women business center as well here. Uh, we work with women veteran entrepreneurs of color. 
Uh, we do government contracting with individuals who are, who are looking to do business with not only the federal government, but also the uh, big, large corporations. So we provide those services for them. Uh, we work with return to citizens. Y'all probably said, man, what's a return to citizen? Uh, the new name for formerly incarcerated individuals or ex-cons are called return to citizen. <laughs> so we work with them. Uh, we have the largest, I believe, the largest youth entrepreneurship conference, uh, I would say, on the eastern coast. Um, we used to have 500 individuals. We had to scale it down because of COVID, but we're going to pick that back up. Uh, we used to bring 500 middle, high, middle and high school students here to the campus and really get them get to them early and expose them to, to entrepreneurship. So, I mean, I love the work that, that we do here at the, the university and within the community. Uh, I believe all of us are connected to the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Uh, I'm super glad to have uh, some colleagues with me now where the HBCUs can now be, play a major role in this entrepreneurship ecosystem. So I'm looking forward to the dialogue that we're gonna have here today. Thank you, Omar. Pam, UMES. UMES, and I was going to absolutely confirm that we have not had all four HBCUs entrepreneurial centers together, simply because we are so brand new. I started in January and um, thus far, this is the Entrepreneurship Center. So um, I'm very, very happy to report that we did just get a grant to start our makerspace. So that was an exciting um, discovery last week. So we're, we're getting started. We're still on our, uh, our pathway. and We're identifying physical space here on campus where we can actually build the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. So we are the newcomers. We're by ourselves over on the peninsula over here. It's a beautiful place to be, but uh, it's very nice to have all of you so that we can collaborate from even across the bridge. Thank you so much. And just to say a couple of words about what's happening at Coppin, I sort of stumbled into this space maybe six or seven years ago. Um, and so Morgan and Morgan Omar certainly is the, the father of entrepreneurship amongst the HBCUs. So we, we you know, we, we give reverence to him in that regard. Um, but at, we were formally stamped as a center in late uh, 2020. 2020, actually, late 2020 by Dr. Anthony Jenkins, our president. Um, I stumbled in about five or six years ago when I was in administration. I was in the dean's seat at the, at the university and the College of Business, and it just was a natural space to be in because there was a lot happening in Baltimore around, and the nation around uh, entrepreneurship and launching those kind of endeavors. So we have three pillars that we operate from, uh, one being economic development. Uh, we do startup technical assistance uh, in collaboration with SBDC and a couple of other partners, PNC Bank. We also have a REAPS program that we are announcing the first recipients, the first cohort of the real estate uh, acquisition program for students. We are funding their real estate licenses. So we're starting that cohort. We're announcing the first five recipients as part of this conference, I think on the second day which is uh, Friday the 29th at, at noon, we are announcing that. We also, in our education pillar, uh, we have programs that reach all the way down to the primary grades. Uh, also that we've just launched, we got some funding for our Future Founders Literacy Program, where we send entrepreneurs into the primary grades, down to kindergarten, first grade, second grade, using the existing curriculum to read to them and infuse entrepreneurial thinking even that early. Um, uh, we have a student organization, the CEOs, the Coppin Entrepreneurship Organization for Students, and an alumni advisory board. They are having events as part of this. In fact, I think their panel will be up the second day of the conference uh, right at the end. You'll see many of our uh, alumni entrepreneurs who are doing great things. And our third pillar is social and community innovation, where we work with a number of partners. We're doing a lot of work in the makerspace community uh, as well. We've had a relationship with OpenWorks since tw late 2016 in Baltimore. So we're very familiar with that space. But doing all of that, you know, it, it with everything that all of uh, the HBCUs are doing, I like to emphasize the fact 
that not all HBCUs are the same. Yeah, we have public, we have private, we have land grant, non-land grant, we have urban, we have rural. We're not all the same. We're not all in the same com types of communities, so to speak. There are differences, but we all bring something to the table that our communities need. Um, we are, I would like to say, the conduits, uh, the engines for uh, economic advancement in the community, for economic mobility uh, in the community. And I'm just going to toss this out. Like I said, this is a kitchen table conversation. So let's say something um, about uh, the role that HBCUs have played uh, historically in terms of uh, changing the, the socioeconomic trajectory of our community in a positive way. What are some of the things that we can draw upon uh, uh, about what our institutions have been able to do uh, in the past of that in that regard? One, as academic institutions, but also in collaboration with other institutions, uh, social institutions in the Black community. Can somebody just pick that up and, and say a few words about it? Yeah, I mean, I can I can start. So I remember when um, it was called the Small Business Institute uh, when it first started, and Dr. Glover she came up from Atlanta to start this. And I just remember, man, on a Friday night, <clears throat> the it was the classroom full of people on a Friday night, eager to learn about entrepreneurship. Um, so I think, you know, what we're doing, the work that we're doing is really, you know, getting out to those individuals um, who are looking to, to get started uh, in growing their business. Uh, another institution, you know, um, you all may not know, <clears throat> excuse me, but I did 22 years on radio uh, here at Morgan State University. And when I had the radio show, there wasn't a lot of entrepreneurship programs around. So, you know, EDAC was there to really, and that's how we came up with some of the events that we had. The community uh, would call in and say, hey, what are you doing with access to capital? Or are you working with returning citizens? Or are you working with women and can't leave the men out? Are you working with men? You know, so I think our institutions play a major role in really being a hub for entrepreneurship um, where we can work with Anybody in the community, I would say, but mostly, you know, individuals around our, our universities and working with, with working with banks, uh, non-traditional lenders, uh, working with individuals that are we call them subject matter experts or so accountants. You know, my, my degree was in accounting and my professor, she was the first African-American woman to pass the certified public accountant exam. And boy, she was tough on us. <laughs> she was tough on us. And her professor was the first African American to pass. Well, she's the first woman, um, African American woman to pass. And he was the first African American to pass uh, the CPA exam. Uh, so you know, our institutions are are really the the role could serve. Well, could are the role maps. That's what I'm gonna say. Are the role maps to really help those individuals who are looking for uh, information to get started and, and grow their business? Let me just throw this in. This is a little known history fact. Uh, only two HBCUs are named for women uh, after women: um, Bethune Cookman and Coppin State University. Uh, Fanny Jackson Coppin was not only, yeah, not only a missionary, but she was an entrepreneur. She was a businesswoman in the late 1800s and an educator. So that's that institutional intersection between faith, education, and uh, business. So yes, anybody else want to pick up? That's good. I, I would uh, like to piggyback. First of all, can I just please congratulate Omar he is the first African-American to be the chair of uh -oh. TEDCO. And I mean, I could not let this go by without, without that. congratulating you, Omar. Absolutely. Easy. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Long time in the making. Yeah, um, we, got, we got to stop having these first, y'all. Not us, but you know, those. <laughs> How about that? that? How about that? It's 2022. But, <laughs> thank, thank you, John. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I have, let me just say this, I have over two decades of experience uh, in running entrepreneurship centers and being here at Bowie State University 
this is my third, this is my third entrepreneurship center. UB, University of Baltimore was my second and Howard University was my first. Howard got a multi-million dollar grant from the Coffin Foundation uh, to develop entrepreneurship across campus. We were one of the original eight uh, Coffin campuses. And, um, and part of that generous grant, of course, was to infuse in the DNA across campus. And before I left, we were in every school and college. Howard has 12 schools and colleges. Um, and we got, uh, uh, but we also, part of that generous grant was to expose other HBCUs. And so we did an HBCU entrepreneurship conference. And so that conference, uh, it attracted over 100, uh, well, out of the 105 HBCUs at the time, 76 came throughout six years. And uh, 27 of them started programs in, entre in entrepreneurship, uh, um, whether it was a certificate, a, a, a PhD, a minor. Um, so I, I say all that to say HBCUs, Kaufman recognized the fact that HBCUs um, needed, uh, there was a barrier. There's a barrier to our folks being able to contribute to wealth. And everybody knows entrepreneurship is that road, is that pathway um, to wealth. And so we're looking at how HBCUs can continue to grow that inside. Here at Bowie State University, our president wants every student to have that mindset. Even if you don't start a business, you can go work for someone and have that mindset, okay? Um, have, have the ability to innovate and create. You know, personally, I don't want a yes person working for me. The people around me, I want them to challenge me and give me ways that we can continue to innovate and grow our program. And those are the kind of people that corporate America wants. And the HBCUs can provide that. We have that talent. We produce the most doctors. We pr produce the most bachelors. You know, we have that talent here. And when you find an HBCU, it's usually in a community where there's, you know, the economic development, where the, it's, it's low. So HBCUs contribute. And, you know, you, you provided some data. I know that UNCF did, you know, this extraordinary, in, this extraordinary uh, impactful economic impact data. And one of the things they did, they did one on Bowie. And they said, Bowie University generates 230 million in total economic impact for its local and regional economies. We create 1,968 1, jobs. And our students that graduate, you know, we play a major role in the economic success of our graduates by enhancing their education, training, and leadership skills. We know that a college degree will open doors and continue to build wealth, not just, it starts in your home. It's infectious. You, you know, a lot of our students come from low economic backgrounds, right? You're coming home with all this knowledge and education. It's infected in your household. The community sees you, you know, and, and, and it enhances, it grows, it festers. And that's what HBCUs, that's what we do, right? That between the education and now we got entrepreneurship. We're adding that on top of all of that to be that pathway to now uh, uh, kind of light that fuse so that students will go out there and say, you know what? Not only can I get a job, I'm gonna create jobs. You know what? I'm gonna create a job and employ people that can now that can now contribute to the economic development of that community. You know, yeah. over 80% of Bowie State University students that graduate stay in the state of Maryland. Come on now. And I know you guys have those kind of statistics as well. We are growing Maryland economy. And people are now, they're talking about it. Yeah, that, 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 that is impact. And one thing I, that you said, I believe that, that really resonates is you mentioned statistics, but we are getting better at knowing the data and so that we can uh, have measurable impact. I think one of the challenges and one of the questions has been, are, are we moving the needle? But now that we are able to get these kind of impact studies, we'll be able to demonstrate that we're actually having a, a moving the needle in a positive direction. Uh, what about you, Pam, the, the historical nature of what we do? Yeah, so um, being over here on the Eastern Shore, we're very, very rural. And believe it or not, we're located in Somerset County, which is uh, among the poorest counties in all of Maryland. And one thing that I've found um, as I've been building this program is there is an enormous gap between the population and business ownership. And what I mean by that, um, here in Somerset County, we have just about 48% of the population identifies as a minority through race, 48% of the population. 
However, only 17% of all businesses in Somerset County are owned by minorities. So you can see that is a huge gap between the rep representation of the population and the representation of business ownership here. So that's one of the things that we're looking to change. And um, it, you know, if you pull the, the data for the entire state of Maryland, I haven't seen a gap that large. So it shows that um, this is the time to start an entrepreneurial center here in Somerset County, um, here at University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Mm -hmm. that, ser that serves the community and will help, help bring some equity um, in terms of business ownership. Um, that, that, it, that shows a huge opportunity uh, to have impact and in what we do and um, for an uh, opportunity for us to collaborate, but for us to uh, also develop programming that is relevant uh, in, our, in, our, in our various contexts. You mentioned rural, rural versus where we are, which is in the heart of West Baltimore, uh, which is a, a, a different context, same, some of the same statistics, but a, but a different context. Um, are there some specific approaches based on uh, your location? Janetta, you in, you're in Bowie. Uh, that's a different space. Omar, you at, at Morgan. And Morgan is a large research uh, institution um, that's doing phenomenal things. I saw something about a robotics program. I, it wasn't the traditional robotics program. It was something that somebody's never heard of before. But <laughs> But say something that you're doing specifically in your context to reach your community. So uh, I'll, I'll start then. Um, so, I mean, for us, it's about those return of citizens. Um, you know, we're in Northeast Baltimore, uh, but, you know, there's still some blocks around here that have some challenges. And, you know, just seeing, you know, some of the, the, the guys and, and ladies now, because it's just not the guys that's being incarcerated. Ladies are being incarcerated too, but, you know, but it looks like it's a majority of men. Uh, so we're, we're going into the community and we're having those conversations with those individuals, you know, to really, you know, have a solution. And, and here's the thing, you know, when you think about entrepreneurship, um, you know, people, you know, used to say, oh, you know, you, you just out there hustling. It's not real. Well, it's, it's real when you are involved in it. And, you know, having the opportunity to to work with these returning citizens, you got to have something to offer them. So we're we're partnering with other organizations. So, you know, if you look at some of the the, the companies that they start, you know, some of them are going into hair care, construction, uh, light construction. You know, now, you know, we're looking at uh, some of this infrastructure that's coming. I, I, we, we're going to partner with this guy who has uh, some construction going underground, you know, giving those individuals opportunity to get certifications uh, so that they can improve their livelihood as well and also improve the community. You know, I always say, you know, we had uh, Mark Moriel on one of these Zooms uh, a couple of weeks ago and I asked him a question, you know, what well, I really posed this scenario to them. I say, what if you looked at East Bolt, I mean, West Baltimore, where the quote unquote riots took place? And we gave those individuals an opportunity. We, we pretty much gave them some of these government contracts to allow them to take over that neighborhood where they have their grocery stores, they have their hair salons, they have clothing stores, they have pharmacies. Uh, and they begin to build that community. And we take that same model and bring it over here, the, the, the East Baltimore, to Northeast Baltimore. We take it to Eastern Shore. We take it to Bowie, Prince George's County, where we're now really creating true economic empowerment, where everybody, I love the fact, uh, Janetta, that everybody has to become, have that entrepreneurial mindset. That's what we talk about as well. Now, now everybody has an entrepreneurial mindset and they're developing the community, their community, and they're doing trade with individuals over here, almost like countries. They're doing trade with individuals over here in Northeast Baltimore, Eastern Shore. You know, everybody has their own uh, separate economies that they're building products and services and we're doing exchanges. You know, so just if we think about that, 
And hopefully, you know, as I know this long term is going to cost some money, but it can be done on a smaller scale and then we can grow it to a bigger scale. So I know I kind of jumped off of your question, Ron, you know, but I did want to, you know, that just came to mind uh, as you, you know, you did ask that that question. No, that's no, that's that's good. That's fine. Is what what else is happening um, in your particular context, either a buoy or UMES that you may be because of of the community that where you're located? Well, I, I I'd like to actually uh, piggyback with Omar. We are also developing a certificate program because we do have a correctional institute right down the street, about probably two miles, not even two miles from us, and and we've also been working with the. Uh, the citizens of the Correctional Institute. And we actually get a lot of our products from the entrepreneurs there. Um, they, they do a lot of the um, construction, we, we, we call ours the built environment uh, for our construction management. And they are you know, getting classes and all that, but we are encouraging their entrepreneurship. Uh, the other thing that you probably don't have as much of in the other regions is farmlands. As far as the eye can see, we literally have farmlands but we are looking to innovate and try to improve processes so that we can assist with growing food so everyone has food. Uh, we look at um, hemp in all of its different uh, forms because there's a lot of uses, um, including biofuel that we have somebody working with. So, so we have a lot, of, um, a lot of opportunity in so much as we have space as far as the eye can see and, you know, the, the farmers usually are not the ones that are given all the innovation and told all the, you know, the ways to improve what they're doing. And that, that's, we have some great folks in our ag department here that can assist with that. So here's a, here's a term for you. Um, agripreneurs. I, I, I haven't, I haven't seen that anywhere or read that anywhere. So as, I give that as a gift. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I will steal it. I will steal it. Thank you. And nobody, nobody that's listening to this or anything disclose where I got the idea. Uh, I will claim that. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Janetta, anything specifically happening in your context? Well, a, a couple of things. We're still growing our program, especially they're still building. They're still building this building while we're in it as well. And so we've got a couple of things that we're doing. Um, we've got our youth entrepreneurship camp that we were partnering with PGC, um, uh, Prince George's County um, high schools. And uh, we're doing a youth uh, entrepreneurship conference this summer. In addition to that, um, we have a program that we're gonna be, I think we lost Pam. Uh, we yes, have a program did. that we're doing um, uh, that, uh, if that will empower our students to actually go into the community and work with small businesses uh, we're partnering with our resources here, um, the um, SBDC, the Women's Business Center, the Bowie, the Bowie BIC, um, so our students can go, and, and the Bowie Chamber of Commerce to go into the community, work with businesses, and help them. Uh, um, uh, it's called Operation, what is Operation, Operation Do Good by Doing Well, and so they're, you know, do assessments, they'll be trained on how to do assessments, um, and work with the small businesses and helping them to scale up, because a lot of times these mom and pop shops what they need is technology. They might need an app developed, a website updated, you know, so that they can bring in more customers, but also to be updated and, you know, uh, uh, to be able to reach their, their specific target customers. And um, in addition to that, of course, our faculty, we're continuing to build their, um, through i programs, we're building their research uh, to help them get, to help them monetize it so that they'll be able to contribute um, to the economy and to grow in other businesses um, as well. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to raise that question because, I, again, I started out by saying that um, we're all HBCUs, but we're not all the same, and, and the context in which we serve are sometimes different. So the, the need for um, some individualization when it comes to approach based on our communities where we serve is necessary, some, some niche programming. Um, I know for us, we chose as one from the very beginning to be um, the manufacturing space, partially because the work we had done in maker spaces and small scale manufacturing and um, local 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 production sort of made it natural. Plus, within our footprint, we have uh, CTE schools 
that have those particular uh, emphasis. Carver High School is within walking distance of us. They have a manufacturing CTE, a business CTE. Edmondson High School, which is not far from us, they have uh, a business CTE. So we're right in the middle of schools that have emphasis. In fact, uh, on the first day of this conference, we have I think 125 high school students that are coming to the campus to participate in this, this particular event. So because we are in the middle of those particular high schools, it makes sense for us to have programming that aligns with opportunities for them. So as much as we are uh, doing what's necessary to be effective um, in, our, in our own communities, there's all the, the huge need, and that's what makes this, this conversation historic, uh, for us to demonstrate unity um, in, in, in our efforts. Uh, you know, this the, the pandemic has disrupted everything over the past couple of years. So as much as it disrupted, it also creates a lot of opportunity for us to do a reset almost you know, to, to, to start afresh and anew uh, on some things. Um, and, and part of that is our collaboration, our coming together, um, <clears throat> us recognizing our individual brilliance and uniqueness, but also at the same time, being able to come together in a very confident way about, you know, uh, the character of each of our institutions but being able to come together collectively and um, really act as a unified force. How do you see that happening uh, going forward, knowing that in some ways this will be uncharted waters? How, how, what are your thoughts about that? Everybody got to leave their egos, just put their egos aside. You know, we, we tried to do this before, but it wasn't an entrepreneurship centers. It was mostly individuals in the schools of business. You know, so I think if people put their egos aside, I mean, we can accomplish a whole lot, you know, and sharing of information, sharing of information, sharing of, you know, opportunities where we can apply uh, for opportunities uh, together. You know, so Janana, you mentioned i -Corps. I know uh, Howard University is doing some things with i -Corps and they're looking to get more HBCUs involved. And if you all didn't get the email from Grant, I'll, I'll send it to you so that you all get, you know, we all can be, you know, working with those companies that are coming out uh, that are doing some, some type of innovation, tech, life sciences, um, so we can do that. But I think the biggest thing, you know, with, uh, with even with businesses, you know, it's leaving your ego aside, you know, yeah. let's, just do, let's do the work. Yeah. I tell you we, what, we, I have not experienced any egos from anybody that I've met through my experiences here. Um, in fact, uh, I, I'm going to call out Janetta, who has been incredibly, incredibly generous with her time and her knowledge to get us to this point as a center. We, we got to meet, uh, I got to come visit the building in December, and, um, and it, it was marvelous. Um, I know, you know, Ron, we've gotten to work, work together on the Open Institute for Black Women Entrepreneur Excellence, and that, you know, it was very nice to me. And Omar, we, you know, we've gotten to connect a couple of times now. And I have never encountered an ego. I've never encountered a single person hiding what they're doing. In fact, we've all told each other when we applied for grants, <laughs> we've all told each other when we got them or when we didn't get them. Um, so I have to say this community, um, especially, first of all, the entrepreneurial community to begin with, I think we're just, we like to help to get others the successes that we have attained and also to help with the, the lessons we have learned along the way. But um, I, I could, I have to say, honestly, I couldn't work with a, a greater group of colleagues across the, uh, across the different HBCUs. Mm -hmm. And I have to, I have to, um, to applaud Omar for his patience, because as he said, he's been, a, he's been at this for a while and, and wanting it to happen. And sometimes you're just in this unique moment in time. And I, I think one of the, um, residual uh, effects of the pandemic is it leveled all of the playing field. It put everybody, regardless of what you thought of yourself before, <laughs> before the pandemic, you had to rethink it. So yeah. it all kind of put it all on level ground. 
And um, I, I think that in terms of leadership in, of entrepreneurship centers, uh, Omar was the Lone Ranger. Uh, Jeanette has been in this space for a while, but with different institutions, uh, I would be the relative newcomer over the past, I guess, six or seven years or so. Uh, so it's it's a unique moment. That's why I think the opportunity is is here. What are your, what are your thoughts, Jeanetta, about uh, the opportunities to collaborate and how we how we shape those uh, and get the most of them going forward? Well, first of all, I, I, I want to say that being here at Bowie State University, when I first got here, our president had just come, we both came at the same time. And I think it's so important that you have support. You can't do this in a silo within your university. You have to have relationships. And I think the biggest thing we need to continue to do is build our network, to build those resources, those people that can help us build the programs across campus, uh, within our community, um, so that we can grow. I mean, at, at the end of the day, and I say this to the faculty, I say this to anybody, it is about the student success. We are here to provide them with the best experience that they can. And that's what our president wants. You know, if we could provide experiential learning opportunities in everything we do, that would be great. Our students tend to learn more hands-on by doing. But that's what entrepreneurship is about. It's about thought and it's about action. You know, we, we, we do. I get my hand slapped a little bit, but we do. <laughs> we, we, we do. But I think the big thing that's going to help us is, is you know, I, I love the fact that we are building this network because that's what it is. It's a network. It's our own little cohort that we can continue because we have different needs than um, the other schools, the PWIs uh, within, our, within Maryland. Um, and I think it's important that we figure out what those needs are so that we can now start having a voice uh, and that voice can be shaped. Dollars might come as a result of it. You know, how are we building our community? How are we building the university? How are we contributing? You know, like you said, Ron, data, data matters. It captures people's attention to hear that, oh my God, Bowie's generating this amount of money within the community. Wow, they are a force. You know, we're not just contributing, you know, our students aren't just, we're not contributing to the workforce. We're helping to build that workforce for our students creating opportunities now. So that I think, you know, um, is definitely going to be uh, a difference in helping to shape what we do and how we move forward. And yes, you know, I love my colleagues and, and uh, I, I don't see any egos on here either, Pam. We're leaving them at the door. We're gonna, Omar, we're gonna leave them at the leave door. Leave the egos at the door. Leave them at the door. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, leave the egos at the door. And I, I'm just okay. saying this from experience, y'all, you know, yeah. not to say that nobody on here is yeah. you know, big egos. I mean, we all got big egos, but yeah, I know there are that lot, I there work, are a lot of I work with do. these two people up here, you know, Ron and Janetta before, and, you know, Pam, I'm just getting to know you, you know, just, we just got to stay strong, strong together because there are opportunities out there in which, I mean, everybody's trying to I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say everybody's trying to hit up the HBCUs now. So, <laughs> while they're trying it, I mean, we got to, we got to grab it while it lasts. Yes. And, the, the, and we got four here, you know. And we want to include the guy in, in D.C. too, you know, there's only one in D.C., but it's four in Maryland. And we should be rocking and rolling, helping out these small businesses, helping out our, our own uh, programs, our centers, and then helping out the university is as well. And because that's what the university wants to see. You know, are you a cost center or are you a revenue center? No. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We're revenue centers. We are revenue centers. We're revenue impactful centers. The entrepreneurship <laughs> center must be entrepreneurial. <laughs> there you go. Entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial in our endeavors, in our own endeavors. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that's that's wonderful. And again, the, a unique moment in time when we have an opportunity. I think the the ability to check your ego uh, is being comfortable in your own skin. That's right. um, yeah, we're not all the same. We, you know, Coffin shouldn't try to be Bully. Bully shouldn't try to be Morgan. Morgan shouldn't try to be UMES. We all bring a piece to the puzzle to the table. And it's developing that strong team. So I, I am, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I love the brilliance that I see on each of the campuses, the buildings that are going up, 
the entrepreneurship uh, across disciplines, the history that EDAC brings in terms of working with women, uh, uh, female population, women, and, and returning citizens, what's happening in U UMES and their uh, agripreneur uh, focus that they have on their, <laughs> in their space. And um, also, again, what we're doing at COP, and we're excited about uh, Dr. Jenkins' uh, uh, leadership uh, on the campus and the opportunities that he's created. I forgot to mention our uh, uh, certificate in entrepreneurship that we that we have and some others that are coming online. But it's an exciting time uh, for our community. And I'm, I want you to know I'm grateful for each and every one of you and what you bring to the table. And I'm looking forward to working with you in the future. Any any parting remarks that you would like to leave with the, the participants uh, before we sign off? Let's just continue to do it. You know, we go out there, you know, entrepreneurship. You know, anybody and everybody should experience entrepreneurship. I got four daughters. All of them experience entrepreneurship. Uh, can't wait. You know, I got two grandkids. You know, they, they're ready. Oh, congratulations. You know, they, they are ready. Yeah, they old, they old grandkids stuff. They, don't tell them I said they old. They four and ten. So they ready. <laughs> They ready to experience entrepreneurship. So to just go out there and do it. And, and Ron, I mean, man, this is this is great. You know, the four of us are now together. And, you know, the four strong institutions are now together. Let's really go out here and be more uh, more impactful to those who we run run into. So thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you, thank you, and we'll be signing off. Thank you. Looking forward oh, to. Can working I do with a shameless plug? plug? Mark oh, your calendar. Absolutely. absolutely. At Mark your calendar, uh, Bowie's hosting a national HBCU, our annual, because it's our second one, HBCU Entrepreneurship mm -hmm. uh, Conference, uh, September 22nd. So it's virtual, and we will have some activities in person. So, yes. Fantastic. Well, when it, or when will registrations date. open? Will they, are they open? The next, within the next month. Well, we'll be sending out a save the date tomorrow. So you'll be Very getting good. that shortly. All right. Thank good you day. so much. And thank you for having us, Ron. Great job. Oh, everybody. no, thank you. Look forward to collaborating thank with everybody. Take thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye.